That's the second time I've done that. Let me grab him. They were right in range. Like, fuck it. That's a limit. Fuck yeah. That's a limit. I got two. You did? Yep. Yeah. Oh, shit. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hey YouTube, how's it going? It's Mark again, and welcome back to the Swamp and Stomp YouTube channel. So a lot of people have been asking me if I could talk about what you need to get started duck hunting in South Florida. So today I'm going to go over some of the things that you can use to get hunting in the STAs as cheaply as possible. In order to hunt the STAs, first thing you're going to need is a permit. Now you can get your permits by going to the FWC site and if you follow the instructions on how to apply for a quota permit, um, you'll be able to do that. Um, you can also apply for reissues every week. All the instructions for that are on the FWC website at the link that's down in the description. Before I get into all the equipment that you're going to need to get out there and hunt, I first want to talk about the STAs in general. So the STAs, or the stormwater treatment areas, are areas that are owned by South Florida Water Management District. And these areas are specifically made to filter the water that's coming out of Lake Okeechobee as it goes down into the Everglades. So they actually play a really important role for us South Floridians. So our ability to hunt in the STAs is more of a privilege than a right. It's important to keep that in mind. Let's try and be as respectful as we can to the biologists and the FWC officers that come out there to regulate those activities which makes it possible for us to be out there hunting. Now there are six STAs in total. You've got STA uh, 1 East, which unfortunately we cannot hunt, but STA 1 West is located up in West Palm Beach. Uh, then we've got STA 2 and STA 3, 4, which are right across from each other on US 27, just north of Weston, uh, sort of in between Lake Okeechobee and Weston. And then you've got STA 5, 6, which is uh, further to the west, which you can access uh, from uh, I-75. Now before you head out there, you're probably going to want to check out the brochures of the STAs to make sure that you know where to go, where the check station is, uh, so that when you're heading there in the morning that you're not late, because when you're late, you end up basically not being able to go in. So I'm not going to explain to you where exactly you need to be. You'll have to figure that out yourself. But I will explain to you the process of how to check in for your permits. So basically, there's two hunts at the STAs on the days that they're open. you got your morning hunt and your afternoon hunt. If you've got a permit for your morning hunt, you basically want to, you have to be there by 4 o'clock in the morning. If you're late, then you basically get bumped to the back of the line when it comes to choosing your spots. So everybody that has a permit gets there at 4 o'clock and the biologist is going to read off the names in the order that you're allowed to choose your spots. You can figure out what place you are in line by going to the brochure of the STA that you have a permit for and you'll actually see a button at the top of that brochure that's going to say, um, I think it says something like uh, permit, uh, permit holder list or something like that. You click on that, you find your um, your customer ID, and then you'll know what spot in line you have. So you get there, they're going to read off names, and as they read off names, those people will come up and choose their spots, and then they can head into the STAs. Now, like I said, if you're late and you're not there when they're doing this, they're just going to go to the next person in line, and you basically get bumped to the back of the line. So you really want to make sure that you get there in time. So the same thing goes for the afternoon hunt, except that they do that process at 1230. So you need to make sure that you're there by 1230. Now once you've picked your parking spot, you just go over there and all that it means is you have to leave your car at that parking spot. You can't park anywhere else in the STAs. Now it does not mean that you have to hunt right next to where you're parked. You can technically go anywhere in the STAs that you want, but it's going to require a little more effort to get out there. Now before you go in, the biologist is going to read off a bunch of rules to you. You really need to pay attention to these. The most important ones are when you're allowed to start shooting, and when you have to finish shooting, and what time you need to be back at the check station. They are really strict about this, and the FWC officers will sit on the levee, and they'll be listening for people who are shooting too early or too late. 
So just make sure that you're not that guy and make sure that you follow all the rules. Also, when you're done hunting, pick up all of your trash. That means all of the spent shells that are in your blind or if you can find any of the wads that are laying around your decoys, pick those up too. You know, like I was saying, keep in mind that this is a privilege, not a right. And the more that we clean up after ourselves, the less likely uh, the South Florida Water Management District is to get irritated by the hunters being out there, which means there's more chance that we're going to get to keep using these resources as hunters. Anyway, enough about that stuff. Let's get into the marsh and talk about some of the things that you're going to need to start hunting. All right, so a lot of people think that in order to go duck hunting, you need to get yourself a really fancy duck boat or a big canoe or something like that. And I'm not gonna lie, having those things does help you get to some of the more difficult to reach spots, but it's really not necessary. Like today, if you look out in the distance there, you can see my truck is sitting right there. We are not far from the levee at all. So today, we didn't even bring a boat out. Instead, all that we brought is this sled that's right here. So you can see I camo, I did a camo paint job on this just with some spray paint, really simple. But this sled was only $35 from Walmart. And I'll put a link in the description uh, so that you guys can check out getting one of these yourself. But these are great because you can put all your decoys in there, you can put your guns in there, you can put your bags in there. And as you can see, we've got all our ducks sitting in there that we just shot. So you can just walk right to your spot here in the STAs. Okay, so once you have one of these sleds and you can put all your stuff in there, there's a few things that you're gonna wanna get, but you don't necessarily need all of this stuff. Obviously, you're gonna need a shotgun. I like shooting this uh, Remington 870. It's a really simple gun um, and I really enjoy it. It's pump action. You don't need a fancy semi-automatic. This will do the trick. And as you can see, it's beat up. I use it a lot and I don't care because it's a pretty cheap gun. Then you're going to need to get yourself some ammo and make sure that it's steel shot. It really doesn't matter what brand you get, but I like shooting number four steel shot in one and a quarter ounce loads. Uh, you can find some stuff at Walmart that Winchester makes that's pretty cheap, or you can just go to Bass Pro and pick out whatever you want. You can spend as little as 35 cents a round to like $2 a round. So it's up to you what you want to use. You're going to want something to sit down on when you're in the blind. Now, you can go out and buy a really fancy marsh stool, or you can just do what I do. Take two milk crates and zip tie them together. That's all you need. You stick that in the water, and it's actually incredibly comfortable to sit on. And my favorite part about it is that it's super lightweight. So that's a nice, cheap, easy thing to do. One thing that a lot of people like to use when they're hunting are waders. You can really use any cheap waders that you find on Amazon. You can get them as cheap as like 50 bucks. There goes a whole flock of teal. Um, these are a little bit more expensive, but you don't need anything expensive. In fact, you don't even need waders. If you wanted to, you could go out there with, uh, you know, just like dive booties. You could, if you have a wetsuit, you could wear a wetsuit if you wanted to. Um, you know, whatever. You can you can come out here just wearing whatever shoes. Just keep in mind that there are little bugs that live in the water and they will bite you. So you're gonna wanna like tuck your pants into your socks and like put a elastic band around it so that those bugs can't get through your clothes uh, if you wanted to do that. All right, so you're also gonna wanna make sure that you're camoed out. You really need to have that camo for ducks because they have incredible vision. And if you're standing out here wearing, you know, random colors that don't match your environment, they're gonna spot you, they're gonna flare out, they're never gonna come close to you. So as you can see, I'm all camoed out. I'm actually wearing our Swamp and Stomp shirts right now. But uh, if you wanna check out some camo that's made specifically for duck hunting, um, you can check out quackskins.com. It's a local company. He makes awesome stuff. Um, and, it, and it's actually pictures of the cattails that you find here in South Florida a lot. So it looks really great. I don't actually have one, so I just rock this. And it seems to work fine because we've got our limit. So as you can see, I've got a lot of different decoys. And as you start duck hunting more, you're probably going to want to buy a few different ones so that you can target different kinds of birds. But just to get started, out here in the STAs, really all you're going to want to get is some coots. These things are definitely the most common waterfowl here in the STAs, and they pretty much work to pull in any kind of waterfowl. 
So if you get yourself a dozen coots, uh, you'll be in pretty good shape. You put that out in a little pod, uh, like 25 yards from your blind, and you should have birds coming in. So once you get your coots, you're going to want to rig them up with some weights so that they don't go anywhere. What I've got going on here is called a Texas rig. You basically crimp a small loop onto your decoy on one end, then you put some weights that slide along the line on the other end, and then make another little loop right here. The reason we want to have that loop on the end there is so that when you attach them to a carabiner, like I've done with these right here, they all hang neatly together, just like this. And the weight will slide down to the bottom. And when it's time to pull them out, you don't have to worry about untangling them or anything. You just undo that carabiner and you just pick up the ducks and start throwing them and they'll untangle themselves as you pick them up. So now that you've got your decoys, you've got your gun, you've got something to sit on, you've got a sled to move all your stuff out, you've got your waders and you're ready to go duck hunting, you head out and you're looking for a spot. Now what you're really looking for in the STAs is you want to look for some plants that ducks want to eat because they tend to congregate around these plants. Now one of the more common plants that you're going to find in the STAs is known as Cara. This is it right here. Now the easiest way to tell that it's Cara is if you crush it up and smell it, it smells just like garlic. So the ducks really, really like this plant. Here's a closer look at it. It's like, it's got these little like branchy, it's like a long stringy thing with little branches coming off. I don't know how to describe it any better than that. I'll put a good picture up. Um, anyway, so once you find this, you want to try and pick a spot where the cara is not all the way to the surface of the water. See, if you look right out here, just beyond these lily pads, you can see that the cara is actually sticking out of the water in some places, and that's going to make it really hard for ducks to land. So what you want, ideally, is to find these spots where there's cara that's just like this far below the surface of the water. When it's, when it's in that situation, it tends to be really bright green and the ducks tend to want to land in your decoys a lot better. So you just plop your decoys down in that spot about 25 yards away from uh, some good cover and then you go in there and you get set up and wait until shooting light. Shoot your limit and get back to the check station in time. And that's a really important thing. Make sure that you follow all the rules that the check station person tells you about at the beginning of your hunt. It's really important. FWC will get you if you don't. All right, guys, I hope all that information was helpful. And if you like the content of this video, make sure you give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure that you do that now. And if you have any questions about this video, if I missed anything, which I'm sure I did because there's so much to talk about with duck hunting. If you have any questions at all, just drop us a comment and we'll be sure to get back to you as soon as we can. All right, guys, that's all I've got for you today. I hope to see you guys at the check station at the STAs. And if you do see us, make sure you come over and say hi. And until next time, stay safe, be diligent, and good luck in the marsh, guys.